Hello, this is Homer Knox of MenTeachingMen.com. In this video, we're going to be talking on the subject of Philippians, the third chapter. The New American Standard and King James Version Bibles will be used for a scripture translation in this video. Hello, brothers and sisters. In this video, we're going to be studying the third chapter of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Philippians chapter 3. Allow me to suggest that you watch the other three videos we produced on this epistle. They include the introduction to the Philippians, chapter 1 and chapter 2, and the links for these videos are listed below. Philippians is just a wonderful book of the Bible, and I've learned so much, and I hope that you have learned a ton. I'm watching these. Verse 1, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. Paul says, finally, finally, coming to the end of this letter. He's only about halfway through the letter, uh, but he mentions finally. And I've heard that term thousands of times in church by pastors and teachers. Finally, in conclusion, to sum it up, in summary, I'm going to use this term at the end of this teaching, just for the heck of it, finally. Finally, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. This is in the form of a commandment. The present times we are living in are bad and are going to get worse. What do we have to rejoice about? Well, Christ died for us. Our sins are forgiven. God has said that he would bless us. He would prosper us. He would protect us. He has given us his word. He has given us his Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, we rejoice that you died for our sins, our sins are forgiven, that you will bless us, that you will prosper us, that you will protect us, that you have given us your word, you have given us your Holy Spirit. I need just hours and hours to talk about all that we have to rejoice about. How is rejoicing a safeguard for us? Rejoicing in our daily walk gives us safety in Jesus' arms. It provides a slam dunk against the enemy's team. Rejoicing helps us not to be shaken by the events of this life. As Horatio Spatford, a Christian songwriter, would say, it is well with my soul. So let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. Psalm 59.10 My God in his loving kindness will meet me. Philippians 3 verse 2 Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of the false circumcision. Paul was giving us three types of individuals to beware of, dogs, evil workers, and false circumcision. Dogs. Dogs at that time were considered unclean. In the Roman Empire and today, Dogs were leashed outside of homes with a sign, Beware of the dog. Have you ever seen a junkyard dog? Like a junkyard dog? Oh, nasty, very nasty. Dogs are false prophets that give messages of false comfort instead of warnings. Unfortunately, there are many in non-Bible believing church leaderships that could be considered dogs. Evil workers. Evil workers. These are teachers that distort the gospel. Our hope should be to keep them out of teaching in Bible-believing churches. False circumcision. False circumcision. Putting your faith in circumcision. Depending on other things to save you other than Christ's blood sacrifice and resurrection. Philippians 3.3 3, For we are the true circumcision who worship in the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. True circumcision, no confidence in the flesh. Those of us that have accepted Jesus Christ and his atoning blood, it doesn't have anything to do 
with the cutting, the flesh. It has to do with the heart change and the Holy Spirit residing in us. True circumcision. Verse 4, Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. The Apostle Paul is now going to give us his spiritual resume, seven areas he trusted in before coming to the knowledge and saving grace of Jesus Christ. Verse 5, Circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee. Verse 6, As to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. Circumcised. Circumcised indicates that he had godly parents who had him circumcised. And it's really from a godly people, from the tribe of Benjamin. We know from the book of Genesis that Benjamin was one of the patriarch Judah's favorite sons. He was a Hebrew. Hebrew is the cream of the religious crop. He was a Pharisee. He studied, he learned, he was obedient. He was a persecutor of the church. He was blameless according to the law. He wasn't sinless because he offered sacrifices for his sins. Paul put his confidence or trust in these items of the flesh. Verse 7, But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Paul now says that his lengthy resume doesn't mean anything to him. Well, what's happened here? On the road to Damascus, Jesus confronted Paul and revealed himself to Paul. When the Apostle Paul met Jesus, as with many of us, many of the things that we prize don't mean anything anymore. Many we consider as rubbish. After I got saved, many of the things in my fleshly resume were meaningless to me. Verse 8, more than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. Count all things as rubbish. This is a powerful statement. He's talking about his resume items. By his conversion, he didn't lose all things. He didn't lose his family. He certainly had friends and many good memories. But the things of the flesh, the pride, the arrogance, he counts as loss. Verse 9, And may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which come from God on the basis of faith. The Apostle Paul is providing us with more of the gospel message. No righteousness from being a lawkeeper. Righteousness from faith in Christ only. You can't get to where you want to go any other way. Peace, joy, and heaven awaits the righteous. Hell awaits righteousness from works. I did, I gave, I worked, I helped, I forgave. They're all works. Have you trusted in Jesus for your righteousness? Have you? If not, while you're still breathing air, it's not too late. Keep watching this video until the end, and there will be an offer of salvation for you to review. Verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. This is one of the many superpower verses in the Bible. Let me encourage you to memorize this verse as it is power packed that I may know him. I may know him, not only to be known by him, but know him. Well, how do we do that? How do we really know anybody? We get to know our God and people by spending time with them. The answer is to spend time with Christ in prayer, in his word, working with him in service. There isn't any substitute for time with Jesus Christ. My wife and I have been married many years, and we are still getting to know each other. By how? By spending time with each other. 
Jesus is so wonderful that it would take a lifetime to know him. And then we would only gotten to know a small part of him. The more we spend time with Jesus, the more he reveals himself to us. Power of his resurrection. Power of his resurrection. I love this. His power, the Holy Spirit's power. How wonderful. I want to lay hands on the sick and have them recover. I want to lay hands on the disabled and have them normal. I want great supernatural wisdom in the scriptures. I want to prophesy. I want the power. We receive the power according to God's will by walking in obedience to our Savior. Fellowship of his suffering. Fellowship of his suffering. Oh boy, can I skip this one? As we know that Christ suffered greatly. Do you want to join in a suffering? This is difficult stuff. 2 Timothy 3.12 Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. The days in America that the church is not under attack are over. I would rather suffer and serve Christ than just wait passively for the rapture. How about you? Do you want to serve? Do you really want to serve? Conformed to his death. Conformed to his death. Paul wants to die to this world of sin and temptation. Conformed. Take on the same form of death, same attitude that Christ had. 2 Timothy 2, 11 to 12. It is a trustworthy statement, for if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Verse 11. In order that I may obtain to the resurrection from the dead. This is an affirmation from Paul. I'm going to go with Christ upon my death. Verse 12. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. You and I are not there yet, but we are working on it. We should be working at growing. We won't become perfect until we enter glory, but we should keep trying. We need to keep pressing in to Jesus. We are all in the same boat, headed for glory, but let's not stop working until we're taken up. Hallelujah. Verses 13 to 14. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul says he is working at perfection. We should all be working for perfection, but it is only obtainable in glory. Forgetting what lies behind. Forgetting what lies behind. In each of our past, we have some very nice good items, and possibly we have some items we'd like to forget. Oh boy, when I stir up my past, I'm in trouble. How do you forget about the poor things in your past? Allow me to suggest that number one, you ask forgiveness for the errors that you have made individually. What is then God's position on our sins? Forgiven, forgotten. Psalm 103.12, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Number two, you might have to make restitution if you have wronged someone. By trying to forget the past poor areas without God's forgiveness and restitution, it's impossible unless you desire a hard heart, which is very dangerous. Hard-hearted people might be headed for some heat in eternity. Don't allow your heart to get hard. Stay obedient. Verse 15, let us therefore as many as are perfect, have this attitude. And if in anything you have a different attitude, God will reveal that also to you. As many as are perfect. Many as are perfect. Perfect, mature, complete in Christ. Full age, grown up. Have this attitude. Well, what attitude? 
forgetting what lies behind, reaching out for the future. Verse 16, however, let us keep living by the same standard to which we have attained. Let's keep moving ahead. Let's not fall back. We have come this far in faith. Let's not lose our place in line or our rewards. Verse 17, Brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern you have in us. Do you know of any brethren that you could follow their walk as an example? I do. I do. When I get in a situation, I sometimes say, what would they do? What would Leroy Walters, Pastor Walters do? What would Pastor Carl Ginder do? Pastor Cy Lehman, Edna Weaver, holy men and women of God. Follow their example, understanding that they are not perfect, but they are working on their sanctification daily. Verse 18, For many walk, of whom I have often told you, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Verse 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is in it their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. Mind on earthly things. Mind on earthly things. How terrible, how terrible. We all like nice things. We all like to go first class, don't we? But when these things take priority in our lives and replace Christ as our number one priority, we are in trouble. If this is you, quickly focus on giving and service. Start giving more and start serving more, and then move to loving more. A solution for a hard heart. One, give more. Number two, serve more. Number three, love more. Verse 20, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, in Philippi, they were all Romans, free or slave. They dress like Romans. They talk like Romans. Our current home is on the earth, a colony of heaven. We are ambassadors of Christ in this world, and we eagerly wait for our God to come back and get us. Hallelujah. Verse 21, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power that he has even to subject all things to himself. That sounds good, doesn't it? Changing our bodies, our sin bodies, our humble bodies, our weak bodies by his glorious, glorious power. When I attend Special Olympics events with my family and see all those disabled children, I just want to lay hands on all of them and make them whole. Well, I don't have the power to do that, but Christ does. And that is what he's going to do with us who have accepted him. Glorious, glorious, glorious. Finally, finally, I hope you enjoyed this teaching on the third chapter of Philippians. Chapter 4 is going to be coming along shortly. Thank you so much, so much for watching. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hello, friends. This is Homer Knox again. I hope you enjoyed this video teaching. The question I have for you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus as your personal Savior? And are you saved? If not, why not? Why not? Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life. He suffered and died under Pontius Pilate and the Romans. He was crucified and he rose from the dead on the third day. He's now ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. There is salvation in no one else, no one else. And so if this has stirred your heart and you would like to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you'd like to reserve a place in heaven for you, please pray with me. Dear Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins, all my sins. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit, and thank you for making me a new creature. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed this prayer from your heart for the first time, you're now born again, you're a Christian, you're part of the family. Praise God. Welcome. Welcome. If you prayed this prayer after slipping away, you're now back in the kingdom. 
you're back in the fold. Congratulations. There's another teaching on the menteachingmen.com website entitled, I Just Got Saved, Now What? And that video will help you on your new walk with Jesus Christ. And I've listed the address to that video below. God bless you. God bless you. Amen.